Well, we are Geeks Not Nerds, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. And it's time for round two of this year's multi-topic extravaganza. Vince, are you ready for more question answering? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so ready. Clearly. Uh, we have lots and lots of questions from you folks. Thanks so much uh, for sending us stuff to answer for the multi-topic extravaganza. Uh, this is one of our favorite things to do every year, and uh, we're, we're really excited about it and jumping into it. Uh, so we're going to put half an hour on the clock here in a second. If you have not had a chance to ask questions yet for the multi-topic extravaganza, and you would like to do that, uh, we're asking for just two questions. Please don't ask them in this video. Please go to the video uh, that is in the description that is the multi-topic app appetizer, and that's where we are collecting all the questions. Uh, we are going from the uh, first question asked all the way down, and uh, we are on the second page, so we're making headway, Vince. We're already Heck on yeah. page two, half an hour on the clock. Uh, we got quite a few answered last time. Let's see uh, what we can knock out this time. And the first question, uh, as I always say, we've not looked at these ahead of time. The first question comes from Duke Loops 1993. Hi, Duke. Uh, Duke says, at the moment, uh, what comic runs have you wanted to read but have yet to? Uh, I have quite a few things that I've bought that are kind of uh, sitting back that I want to review eventually. <laughs> so you uh, own so some stuff. I own quite a few <laughs> things that I that, that I want to read that I haven't gotten around to. Uh, and that's most of what's in my mind, uh, like uh, Rick Remender's Captain America, and um, I, I've got to read uh, Why the Last Man, which was uh, donated to me by uh, Dan's News, and he asked me to review that, and I saw I got around to that. That was a while <laughs> back. So, yeah, quite a few things that are just uh, kind of sitting um, in the... I have, I have uh, the entire run of Powerpuff Girls, uh, that that I still need to read. So yeah, lots of stuff I own. Certainly stuff I don't. What about you, Vince? Uh, Saga. Yeah, I hear lots of good also things about Saga. Saga. Yeah, I I would love to get into some of those uh, dynamite things that uh, I just you know haven't had the time or finances to get into because there's you know I have a lot of stuff. I, I would like to go back and read some of the Spider stuff that they made. Uh, I would love to read Gail Simone's Red Sonia. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, I think I read one issue of that at one point. It was kind of neat, but um, I had no context around it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I haven't read any uh, of the Green Hornet stuff. I know you've read some of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't read Kevin Smith's. Uh, I know Mark Mark Wade either is still writing that or had a run on it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Whether and it's Dan going was reviewing either. that for a while when he and I and when he and I were doing a live show together, and it sounded great. Yeah, I I like. I like a lot of that stuff. I mean, even some of the characters I didn't follow before, I've never really looked into the spider, but uh, I'm still reading The Shadow, and uh, I would like to get into some of those uh, phantom things that I haven't read. And uh, there's, I mean, essentially, you could go to the indie shelf and just kind of pick and point. I would love to read pretty much anything Dark Horse puts out. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean I will or that I'd love it. I'm just saying I would be interested in reading most anything. Uh, I want to read more Green Arrow. I want to I mean, go back to uh, like like uh, like I haven't read all of Mike Rell. Uh, I haven't read uh, the Kevin Smith stuff. So I guess Kevin Smith on things. Yeah, there's not a lot. I mean, I read his Daredevil. I mean, there's a little bit, but uh, you know, he's he's got he's got some stuff. Have and, you read uh, Longbow Hunters? I, oh yes, and Longbow okay. Longbow Hunter is wonderful. Uh, but that's one of the few that I've actually that I've actually looked at. Yeah. Uh, haven't <laughs> haven't read uh, recently. Uh, Dan and Steve reviewed. Viewed uh, the uh, major Deadshot mini uh, uh, from the '80s. I've never read that. Uh, I've got that. And that's another thing I've got that I haven't read yet. So yeah. Anyway, so yeah, there's a number of things. And also, uh, Silver Age, Silver, and maybe even a little bit of Golden Age, but especially Silver Age DC, uh, because there's so much stuff that informs things now. Like I'd like to go back and read a lot of the things that influenced Morrison's Batman. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, I'd also like to pick up uh, Andy Parks. Lone Ranger. I've not read that yet. I've not finished uh, whatever the first guy who did the Lone Ranger stuff for Dynamite was. Um, <laughs> Brett Matthews. I don't know how well we'll do with this just right off the top of our heads, Vince, but Duke's second question, uh, man, he, he's making us a noodle today. Uh, name a few guilty pleasure comic stories. Things that aren't great, but that you love anyway. Okay, I guess <laughs> I'll start with... Um, I'll start with Marvel Zombies. Nobody seems to actually like Marvel Zombies, but me. Um, I, like, 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 cause so it, does that make it guilty, though? 
Yeah, I guess I'm not that guilty about. It. I'm just saying like, it's not a great story. But then, okay. but then I actually kind of like some things about it story wise. So I, I don't know. Um, I mean, I guess I've reviewed it. I don't remember what exactly I said when I reviewed it. But I, um, but yeah, no, maybe that's not quite right for guilty pleasure because no, I still kind of stand beside that. You know, I I kind of stand it, beside, beside it. it. I stand beside it. I think I stand I'm behind not, it. I'm not sure that mine's so much a guilty pleasure as it is just I'm astounded that it don't hate it. What's that? It's, uh, the Conehead sequel. That's hilarious. The three issue Conehead sequel I thought was genuinely Have funny. Have you done a vault on that yet? Uh, I think I did a recommend on it. Oh, okay. Point. Okay. I, I liked it quite a lot. Guilty. You should do a vault on it just so we can see the uh, the, the art. Oh, true. Because I'd love to see what that looks like. It's very 90s ish. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what? You showed me some of that. Yeah, yeah. It was very. Well, it, it, was, a, it was a DC thing, wasn't it? I, I don't recall. I think it was Marvel, actually. Oh, okay. No. You know, at some point. It's a licensed thing. Who knows which one it was? Uh, Could have been Archie. Oh, this is another thing I reviewed and, and said this when we when Dan and I reviewed it. Uh, Maximum Carnage. There's so much that doesn't make any sense at all in that book, but I love it anyway. <laughs> that's, that's definitely a thing. Uh, I sort of, kind of, I would say for recent stuff, sort of, kind of, I would say Superman Doomed because it's nonsense a lot of it, but it's kind of fun. I. Uh, Guilty pleasures, some of the original Phantom stuff. Right. <laughs> some of that, some of that old Phantom stuff. I'm like, this is lame. I gotta know what's gonna happen. He's yeah. gonna punch somebody with his ring. See, a lot of the stuff I'm thinking of are things that I think a lot of people would call guilty pleasure, but that for me, like, I feel like I can put myself in the, in the time period, and then it's yeah. about that. You know what I mean? Where like, you know, I can I can have some historical perspective. Um, I love uh, Stan Lee's original run on Daredevil. I love it. I think I think it's great. Um, I've not read it. Uh, a lot of people go back to that and they're like, "Oh, this is like really really lame and silly." And compared to what we have now, it, if you didn't know what it was, you'd say that. But what he was doing was a different thing, and I really I really liked it. You know, I read it and I kept wondering where Vincent D'Onofrio was. <laughs> really, really. So you just now read it then? I was is like, what you're saying. Have, have, you, okay. have you? So you've never read the the, uh, the early Daredevil Yellow stuff? No, I've not read any of it. <laughs> I really like this. Have you ever read Daredevil Yellow? No. I, you should. It's cool. Not even Lobes. That's what I mean. Dare, oh, okay. Yeah, Daredevil Yellow. That, that's the only thing called that. Oh, okay. I do. As far as I know. I do enjoy some of the Lobe sale stuff. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm kind of surprised that we didn't do Daredevil Yellow for uh, one of the Secret Wars tie-ins. That would have been cool. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Jordan Cool says, uh, Green Lantern question, why do you think they used a CGI mask over a green domino mask? That's a very good question, uh, and, and something that I didn't really tackle uh, when I did my rewind. I, I somewhat recently did a rewind on that movie, and um, it, it it just wasn't really a good move. Uh, it, it's, it just doesn't really look like it's actually there, and that's why people have you know issues with it and make fun of it and stuff. Um, I, I, I think they were just trying to make it look alien and different and... More here, luminescent, here's maybe? A, yeah, here's a thing we can do, and uh, maybe they thought that it wouldn't look, you know, as silly and spandexy if if there was, like, there was movement going on in it. They should do the same thing that they do with the green... <laughs> with the arrows mask, just spray on his face. <laughs> well, you know, season one. <laughs> I just feel like, and I, and I guess I don't know exactly, you know, you know what was on his face, like in the actual production. But I feel like you could have gotten that effect and still had like a physical object and just add something to it in post instead of it looking yeah. like there was like Jello hanging off of his head. <laughs> it sort of, kind of, sometimes it looks like. See, I just assumed it was completely CGI. I didn't think they did anything beyond because you know it, it looks like it is, and that's yeah. yeah. Like, why would they do that? Why would they CGI something over that was that was actually there? <laughs> yeah, uh, Shane X Y Z. Off the top of your heads, what do you think are the two rarest comic book related items in each of your respective collections? This is the thing I think uh, we've answered before, or at least like like you know you know uh, most uh, you know the, the the stuff that we own that's like worth the most and that kind of thing. What do you think is the rarest thing you have? Uh, paraphernalia and comic books themselves. Yeah, he yeah, just says comic related, so yeah, oh, okay. Co comics count. Sure, the comics are comic related. You know, <laughs> it's not the most expensive collectible I have, but the most expensive comic related collectible I have, I think, is my uh, Dark Knight Two Face, my twelve inch Hot Toys, because now <clears> the <throat> thing's going for like five or six hundred dollars. Yeah, so 
my most expensive collectible is the uh, Mattel Ghost Trap from Ghostbusters. But that's only peripherally comic book related. Right. Um, I have some, uh, of, of course, some cool uh, custom stuff that's not licensed, so it's rare just by definition because there's only one or two of them. You know what I mean? Uh, my my uh, my Spawn Dreamcast. Uh, there's only oh, the guy yeah. only made two of those. Um, my uh, my custom zombie tick. Um, I have the only one of those. And we uh, we just recently got uh, a really great uh, Venom painting on canvas. Of course, uh, th- there was just um, a, a guy who did that, so there's only one of those. Um, as far as uh, stuff that is. <clears throat> Uh, kind of, kind of rare and hard to get. That is licensed. Um, I know I'm gonna hit myself in the face later on because I, I know I'll think of something that that uh, that's that's you know more rare than things that are coming in my head right now. I've recently gotten a few tick things that are kind of tough to get, um, and I'll reveal those later on. But um, what what else? I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, I don't know. I tend to collect things that are. Fairly easy to find. Yeah, I mean, I do have. Uh, I, I guess it's comic book related. Uh, I have. I think it was originally a bold novel, but man, I keep bringing up the Phantom. I have the uh, Real Art Studios uh, Phantom statue. They made about three of them, I think. Oh, and, really? Uh, That's cool. Well, not three of these, but they made three different statues. And oh, I think I, see. I have okay. like number eighty-six out of like five hundred or something like that. And uh, right now, number 86 out there is like, no, I have number 80. It's got to be like number 87. But uh, <laughs> it was a Valentine's Day gift, first Valentine's Day gift from my wife. And uh, those things are hard as heck to find, man. Those Real Art Studios things. Oh, my God. They get, they get pricey, man. I would love to get the shadow one they have, but I'm not going to spend that much. We just happened to find a guy who had it in his store for years, and he's like, you know... Just make me an offer to get it out of my store. So, heck yeah. Uh, got some older comics, of course. Uh, you know, we, we bring those, those things up a lot. Um, I've got I've got some early uh, Daredevil and FF and stuff like that. But um... I have a signed Hack Slash Omnibus number two <laughs> from, uh, from uh, oh, Devil's Due, which is better than the image one because they include all of it. So, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm finding right now, except for, like, uh, you know, the, the tick thing I'm doing, because I'm trying to kind of be completionist with that. It's the first time I've ever done that. Uh, I'm finding myself, these days, enjoying collecting uh, more one-of-a-kind stuff. Yeah. Um, which I never used to do, but I'm doing more of that now. Uh, Hawk Flame, a lot of... Oh, I'm sorry, he had another question, uh, Shane XYZ. If DC asked you to rewrite or write for the first time an origin story for a Batman villain, which villain would you pick, and what would be the basis of the story? That was the time I would have said Clock King, but I really loved what they did with him in Arrow, so probably not him. Uh, Batman villain, and he barely counts as a Batman villain. Batmite. Really? Yeah. What would, what would Batmite's new origin be? It would be, I would, you know, I would just force Manos to read it. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter what it is. I would just force Manos to read it. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, you know, if memory serves, that was one of the things that Morrison made a figment of Batman's imagination, and I thought that was as good of a rewrite as anything. Yeah, that's fair. That's, that's great. I like that. Uh, there, I, I always go to this. There are some '66 Batman villains that I that I am I think uh, that, that I'm, I'm kind of confounded by the fact that we haven't brought them back and done anything serious with them. Uh, where is Bookworm, and why have we not made him scary yet? That just seems like a thing that could really easily be done, and I, I don't I don't know why we're not doing that. Uh, so yeah, he he'd be he'd be the thing. He'd, he'd, he'd be it'd be Bookworm, and um, I would off the top of my head, I would make him. A failed novelist that forces uh, Gotham City to live his brilliant book that gets a lot of them killed. Hmm. That's that's what yeah, that's yeah. what I do with him. I would mind seeing a Scarface origin. Yeah. I'm sure that's been done a few times, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. I've never read it. I like, would, uh, and and uh, with bookworm, you'd have to have even in a serious bookworm thing, you, you still obligatorily have to have the giant book in the middle of the street. That's very important. You have to have that. <laughs> um, okay, hot flame. A lot of movie, comic book, and television franchises have been reinvented over the years. Think of all iterations of Batman, Ninja Turtles, and even updates slash reboots of Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica. What is the next series or franchise that you would like to see reinvented, and what kind of new take would you like on that series? Somewhat similar to the last question. Um, 
I'm not sure I followed it. So, uh, what is a property that has yet to be remade that you uh, that you think should should be uh, in in the vein of uh, something like like uh, like what was done with Battlestar, mm, which I guess is still supposed to be redone <laughs> uh, again. Um, it seems like we what? we keep going back to um, 80s and 90s things and uh, and and re-updating them. Um, I would be really surprised. And I'm not saying this would necessarily be my pick, just because I'm not a big fan of this. Um, I'm surprised we haven't done it at Highlander yet. Yeah, we need one that's actually good. That's ha! Take that, lovers of Highlander. Wow, jeez, them fighting words for some people. I hate Highlander. Yeah, I'm not a big. No, no, no. I think Highlander one is ridiculous, and I think Highlander the rest of them are terrible. The rest of them, <laughs> Highlander the rest of the Highlander colon the rest of them. Yep. That's not fair. I there's campy things to love about Highlander yeah, one. I will let that slide. <laughs> Uh, I I think it was really sad what happened with uh, Bionic Woman uh, right. and that that wasn't great and it didn't fly. I feel like we could do that again uh, and really make it work. Um, I'd like to see uh, going going in, into uh, kind of Vince's realm for a minute. Um, I would really like to see Rocketeer come back, uh, but I feel like we did a really good job with it the first time. The only reason I'd want to see that remade is because I don't really see doing a sequel to that movie this this far out. I I, I think you'd want to probably start again. Um, but yeah. you know that's the thing. So I don't know. I mean, there's 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 quite a few things uh, that would be fun to see come back. There was a time when I would have said X Files, but I'm really excited that they're not rebooting that and actually just bringing it back as a miniseries uh, with you know the same cast. So, uh, but that was a thing I thought at one point I could sort of see getting away with maybe rebooting, just I, because it got so convoluted. I would like the Untouchables. I think that'd be a heck of a show. Untouchables. I would like. To bring back Zorro, because I just love Guy William Zorro so much. Well, I also feel like Zorro is a thing that can easily be reinterpreted every couple of decades. Yeah, I mean, you just kind of keep coming back. I, I'd love to see the same thing about the Lone Ranger. I mean, it's funny that like, like, like this this recently after an attempt at a Lone Ranger uh, uh, reboot remake, whatever. Uh, yeah, do that again, but do it right this time. Yeah. And by right, I just mean make it not so long and overblown and make the Lone Ranger an actual character. That'd be great. <laughs> make him somebody that you want to watch and don't make Tonto, you know, insane. Yeah, or if you if Tonto's got to be the main character, call it Tonto and the Lone Ranger. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, why not? But just, you know, uh, you make a movie called the Lone... Oh, uh, Green Hornet. Yeah, Green Hornet should be brought back. There's a, I think there's a lot of uh, stuff that could be plumbed from that time period, the 50s, 60s. I also think there's a lot of superhero things that now that it's become in vogue to do things more uh, more authentically and true to the comic origins uh, that we have attempted in the past that it's it's time to come back and do now uh, because the the way the way to uh, to kind of to kind of flip it and make it fresh again would be to ironically do it the way it was originally <laughs> in the first place and as I always say I'm not saying that that everything has to be just like the comics but uh, but you know you know it's it's kind of fun how you know you get so far off the beaten path and then a thing doesn't perform and then the thing that would make it feel so fresh is do it the way it was originally intended <laughs> so there's quite a bit of that uh, good question. Let's see, going on to... We got through another page! Yeah! Woo! All right. Uh, I don't know if I can read that question. <laughs> yeah, um, it got cut off. I'm not even sure that was a question. Let's... Yeah, that's actually not a question. Okay, uh, good. I'm glad that's not a question. Hooray! Magpie's Nest. Hi, Magpie. Uh, have you ever watched Thunderbirds or Thunderbirds are Go? Are the Thunderbirds movies, all three of them, going to be on Superhero Rewind? I don't know. Uh, he's asked me about this before. I just don't know anything about Thunderbirds. Uh, I think that was the thing that was remade. If memory, Was that the thing that was remade by... Um, uh, uh, Jonathan, was Jonathan Frakes uh, uh, directed that, I think. Um, I think that's what that was. But anyway, uh, yeah, I've never seen that. I don't know really? anything about it. Uh, I didn't even know about this thing until Magpie brought it up to me in the first place. So, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, no, I have I have no opinion. Um, I may eventually do those if I decide they are superhero enough. Yeah. I could never really get into the original Thunderbirds and the... Uh, I saw one of the movies that had Bill Paxton in it, and I thought it was okay, and that, but that was back when it first came out, and I was younger, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, Shadows 
and Shines11. How exactly did you and Vince initially meet and become best friends? We'll answer this briefly. We, it seems like every year we have to answer this. Uh, but we, we do we do get new subscribers and uh, welcome and thanks for being here. So um, I, I don't want to uh, you know exclude those people and say, well, you have to go back to uh, you know number three of Multitopic Extravaganza 2 <laughs> or whatever it was. That's not necessarily the video, okay? Don't go to that. It might... That would be amazing if that's where it was. Funny story. We met yesterday. Middle of Spawn here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your joke is funnier than mine. Um, <laughs> yes, we met in the... How did we manage that? That's amazing. Oh, yeah. y you are in the prologue. Uh, oh, crap. Well, at least right. Doom's Vince is. Um, oh, wait. So, yeah, how did I... Oh, so I met Doom's Vince before Vince. Okay. That's right. That is not what It's a joking. clone of me, but he never met me before. That is that is not what happened. Anyway, uh, so, Vince, I've told this story a thousand times. It's your turn. You, you, uh, you tell this story. Cap and I went to KU. 500 words or less. No, I'm at, uh, at about the same time. Cap was there a little bit before me. We both joined a playwriting class. And uh, I had this was the first class I took at KU, pretty much. And uh, Caps, uh, for those of you who don't know, the University of Kansas, and uh, in Lawrence, Kansas. And uh, we all went around and said a little bit about ourselves. And apparently, Cap and I were the only ones that shared anything that I considered to be of, sub of substance. Everybody was like, "Hi, I'm Julian. I have brown hair." And we discovered we had a lot in common. <laughs> like we both sit like this. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And sometimes we both sit like this. But That's right, we do. Yeah, oh, well, we both have a tendency to do this. Yeah, but so we have a lot in common. We both wear glasses. <laughs> um, we're both capable of growing facial hair. <laughs> That's true. We are both human beings, as far as we know. Well, well men, because w women can't do that. That's well. Little do you know, sir. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. But uh, so most uh, of them, we kind of. We struck up a friendship. We started having lunch and stuff because it was like right either I forget if it was either before or playwriting class, so we might as well. And, uh, and so uh, it was at the end of the day. It was like middle of the day, but neither of us had anything in the afternoon. So yeah. we would go to we would go to playwriting class and then we would go have lunch. And it was it was a lot I of think. fun. We basically went to class and then chatted about class and then chatted about whatever else. And uh, eventually, Geekvolution became a thing that uh, he became an intern for, and then the uh, the editor, and then I became an intern for after he became the editor and brought me in, and we started writing for this thing. And then eventually, Geekvolution was just handed to us and said, "Hey, uh, we don't want to continue doing the thing that we were doing. Make it whatever you want." Which was this like social network thing that just didn't ever ever quite make it. So he had other irons in the fire and decided to not continue with the project. So we got Geekvolution in here. I think I uh, yeah, and then we 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 turned it into this uh, rev this primarily review thing instead of what it was before. Um, I think uh, significantly one of the things, of course, that that uh, that brought Vince and I together was was comics. Uh, and I I want to say that you probably didn't have a lot of friends that were into comics. No, uh, and I and, and I, I certainly didn't either. Um, not a lot, anyway. I had a few, but nobody that was uh, like an avid reader, and I was the only person that was buying new at the time. Yeah, and you had that up on me at that point. Which I had just started buying new because I wasn't in a town that had <laughs> comic stores. Uh, Vince had a, and obviously still does, I had a, had a really great trade collection, uh, and I got to read some stuff that I had never, um, that, that I'd never gotten around to reading because I met Vince. But uh, Vince, we've known each other for almost a decade. Hokey smokes. Isn't that crazy? Next oh year, gosh. next year it'll be 10 years. Really? Yeah. 06. Heck, it just seemed like four years ago, it was, <laughs> it was just six years. <laughs> <laughs> you should be proud of that. That was funny. Uh, number two, considering the uh, MCU's decision to cast a teenager as Spidey and the character's apparent lack of evolution in his own universe over the last few years, would either of you consider Spider-Man the Peter Pan of comic books, and why or why not? Uh, I would not. Because, I mean, they, they get to cast whatever they want for the new Spider-Man, because it's not the same thing from the comic books. And, uh, in the yeah, it's comics, not the same thing as the previous franchise, either. And I would say he's pretty much the only one who's really aged at all in the last, you know, <laughs> since its inception. That's a really good point you're making. Because yeah. he went from teenage to college to, you know, young adults. And in then, about 24? Five years? Yeah, and then you still have... You so so, so Spider-Man begins in 63, and he was married by, what, early 90s? Somewhere in there. Really, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like, like in comic time, that's pretty rapid. I would say he's the only one who keeps getting used. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, yeah, we, we keep, keep going back and then bringing it forward. We keep having to go back, yeah. Um, but everybody I mean, else is pretty much the you age could, they were. Yeah, I mean, you could make the case that he's the Peter Pan in the sense that they won't allow him to grow up, but he grows up sometimes, and then he gets 
mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, de de grown upified. And I think that people uh, I, I, again that, grown up. That's that's an that's an interesting question. I, mean, I totally see why you would say that. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's just that so much. Like right now, we have the Spider Man, who's not a teenager, but then we have uh, Miles you know, Morales, who's like. Yeah, who's what? Just, he's still he's still what thirteen fourteen. He's like nearly a preteen. Yeah, and then you have uh, you know Ultimate Spider Man who uh, was you know up until recently was the thing that got brought back to life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, it was it was another clone scenario, but yeah. So we we have uh, he becomes an adult, then we make a teenage version of him, and then we make an alternate teenage version of him, and then we make a we bring back the teenage version of him that died. So you know we just keep getting these teenage Spider Mans out there. If this whole Spider-Man Spider-Man Man thing, and, and also you, you know he was asking about the MCU, so I would so I would say uh, that as far as the with regards to the movies, uh, he hasn't been allowed to age yet, just because or to age very much yet, just because we haven't had a franchise that went longer than three movies. Yeah, uh, yeah and they yeah, all you started I mean? its inception, which happened in high school, right? So yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, That's if you look, start. if you look at uh, the way a lot of movie franchises go, a lot of time we'll have a we'll have a trilogy where the characters are supposed to be the exact same age the whole way through. You know, you, you know what I mean. So, I mean, this uh, excuse me, this of course he's allowed to progress age wise a little bit, but that, but but uh, but I but I'm just saying, I mean, like that's not enough, that's not enough time to really go that far. Um, so we just haven't had. Uh, you know, a Peter Parker on screen long enough, and I also think it'll be really interesting in the Marvel Cinematic Universe to see uh, if we allow any of these characters to age very far, uh, because we are still working. It, it, it seems to be in real time. Uh, so we've talked about this a lot, but uh, the whole question of recasting and that kind of thing. So um, I'm going to suggest something as far as the comics go. If this whole aging Spider-Man thing business is such a big deal where we have to keep de-aging him because if we let it go too far uh, in, in the direction Stanley wanted it to go in, in the first place, he's going to have to get old and die at some point. Why don't we just have a separate Spider-Man universe or even a separate Marvel u- universe, almost a la Ultimate, but it doesn't have to go that long. Or, or, or rather, it doesn't have to be a bunch of different lines. It can just mostly be Spider-Man. And just play that out. Just play it out. Just just like just like let it run for, for uh, you know, you know two or three decades. Um, or even do it in real time and let it run for a couple of decades. And, uh, and say, okay, in the Marvel Universe, every now and again, we're going to have to retcon crap just so that Spider-Man can still be here. Um, but, uh, but we could do this other sort of definitive thing that maybe even starts at some place in the original Spider-Man run, and then moves off with itself. and You know what I mean? Sort of like Marvel 2 did, except actually let him keep getting even older than that. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? It just I would not just mind seeing the... Uh I would not mind. I would not mind seeing the continued adventures of Spider-Man and Spider-Man or in Marvel too. Marvel That'd be too, cool. yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing one-legged Spider-Man try to do stuff. Sure, <laughs> why not? Uh, we don't have much time left, just three minutes, so we'll answer uh, one or two more of these. Uh, oh, he also says, do I have permission to make a Nerdvolution channel? Yeah, knock yourself out. Uh, <laughs> Alex Ruddick, what film... <laughs> knock yourself out. <laughs> what film... or t- Nerds, not geeks! Yeah! <laughs> 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 Alex Ruddick, what film or television franchise? That'll be two guys that, that like yeah, inverted names. It'll be like whatever Vince is backwards, um, like like <laughs> Ecknib? Ecknib, and I'm Ecknib. <laughs> you sound like an anamorph. <laughs> um, what film or television franchises have important stories that are canon that you wish hadn't happened? How would you change them? Pretty well anything that's ever had a Christmas episode. <laughs> that's amazing. Okay, so the so the question is except for Warehouse that, Thirteen. So yeah, so the question like, is things that 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 are, that, that, are, that are considered canon within a story that you didn't like in the first place and in in, in, in in you think should be ex- or excised from it. Um, Enterprise. A lot, a lot of Enterprise. I mean, that's the difficulty that you run into when you start getting like multiple series in the same franchise, right? Where like you know sometimes like 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 when it gets really really blown up and there's a whole bunch of different series, sometimes you'll get like there's a whole a whole swath of the universe. Where you're like, I don't like that stuff. The episode of Daredevil. And this could just be because I'm dumb, but the episode of Daredevil where Daredevil defends the assassin in court. That episode annoyed me because I don't feel like they actually use real rules. <laughs> oh, but you need that because it's the only episode in the whole season where he actually goes to court. Yeah, no, they needed to make it more, you know. There's also sensible, of, but there's a lot of stuff in that that's cool. You cannot convict a person and then let them walk free. That makes no sense. That season is so tightly 
put together, though, Vince, that you can't take out an entire episode. Yeah. You can take out that one part that you don't like. That's fair. We'll take out that stuff. I mean, or I just even, think they you're should You're not even saying it. rewrite. You're just saying rewrite that part. Yeah. yeah this, that, that whole thing needs to be done differently. It looked really cool up until it got to the end, and I went, this made no sense at all by the time. I was like, I'm ready. Make this make sense. And then they got to the end, and I'm like... It's not sequential. I mean, it's not necessarily something that has any bearing on the rest of the series. Other than Kingpin's a really scary dude. <laughs> um, well, I, I mean, I don't want to get into it too much. I, I think I, I think there's there's more going on there than you're letting on. Yeah, um, yeah there's little... there's some there's some stuff. With, you're being a little hyperbolic. There, there's some there's some stuff with uh, with with Wesley that really matters. Um, and, uh, yeah. and 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 with how um, with 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 how uh, Karen Page fits into the whole thing and all that. Um, so you know a lot of that. Um, not the courtroom stuff, but that's the same episode that they set up. Th that that no, stuff yeah. with him coming in, so like Fair the stuff. Point. There's a lot of important stuff in that episode. Yeah. Anyway, All I'm saying um, is you didn't say the episode. Uh, tur loops. Turbo both the Power Rangers, or both the movie and the series. Uh, just all, <laughs> just get rid of all of all of it. Uh, all of this. This is a good question. I'd love to revisit this one uh, with maybe maybe a list of the top three or five at yeah. some point. Uh, th this is a really good question. Everybody, thanks as always. Uh, we are out of time. We'll see you again next week for some more multi-topic extravaganza. And uh, if you haven't left questions yet, be sure to go to the link in the description to the multi-topic appetizer. Leave your comments there. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. Reminding you to support your local comic book store. Thanks, folks. We'll see you next time. Ah, my fingers. Ah, my everything. Ah, my everything again. Oh.